Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. This is part two of the Lambda video. It's probably three parts I think we're gonna be doing. So last time we did the blue white, so inside the panels, so to speak, and we did the red stenciling work. Uh, in this video, we're gonna address the gray airbrush work that you need to do on the edge of the black. Um, and there's gonna be a little bit of brush work as well. Um, we're gonna split it down there's going to be some time lapse in this because I'm going to work through the whole model uh, so you get to see all of that or we'll just cut that out and then we come back and it'll look all shiny. So I mean I remind you of what we got, I'll show you on the, the overhead, we've got this one, this one's already been done and this is what we're working towards. So you can see we're going to be working on these, these grey edges that are on the edge of the wings and that are on the actual, on the panel lines, you can see them on here. Right, and this is all done with an airbrush and then edge highlighted with a with a brush to get the really high high whites and i'll show you where we're at with what we're working on at the moment it's just the blue white and the black's been base coated i did do a little bit yesterday at home you can see we've already got the highlight here and the highlight on these panels and there's a little edge highlight on this side around the wing so i've already started masking on this side and I'm going to get some paint in my brush and I'm going to crack on. So I'll be using uh, cold grey. It's Vallejo Air, Game Air, as always. Give things a good shake. I gave my brush a, like a D-clean last night. It was spraying a bit funny and I found a big clog, a build-up of paint. So that's all been cleaned out and hopefully she should uh, behave herself today. Let's just check her out, so you guys can see. So she seems to be spraying lovely, nice and even. I always work off a little bit of colour, well, to be fair, on my desk at home I've got a great big wooden block and it's covered in about a million different colours of paint. So old man glasses, and as you can see, right, so I've masked up here, that's the, the these three little panels, and what I've done is I've marked both sides and just at the top and I'm going to do that panel and then move that bit of masking tape as I keep going down so um, I shall crack on right so all I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to catch one side right so I've worked out where I want my light coming from let me get a brush to help me like a pointer like a teacher would have in school so on this uh, uh, actual panel here I'm just going to catch from this side moving this way so I want to catch this edge and a bit of this edge. I don't want to go around here at all. I want to leave this black. So, so like I said last time, I'm just going to catch the corner of the masking tape. moving down so that one's done and I'll move down I'm going to skip the one in the middle just to give that top one a bit of time to dry I'm moving down to the next bit And then moving up to the middle little panel line. And I'll unpeel the sides and you'll maybe be able to see a little bit better now. The effect we're going for. So I'm sure you can see that now. 
we've got this lovely graded grey catched primarily on those three edges and then softening off against this lovely black. So it's also got a panel line here, panel line here. So I'm just going to catch those quickly. Trusty bit of tape, second bit of tape. So now you don't, with this style, you don't have to like be true to go, oh, I'm only going to light it from one direction. I just want to catch an edge now. So I don't care about where the light's coming from. I'm going to catch it the opposite way, if you know what I mean, to what I've already done. Just because I want to lift some of that detail that's hiding in that black paint. I'll move straight down to the one below it and catch the other edge. So patience is a key with these things. If you want to use an airbrush to catch the, to do these sort of results, you've got to be willing to work through with masking tape and take your time. So whenever you see me spray on my hand, that's because I feel that my brush is not giving me the paint I want with the right amount of air, so it sometimes just needs a little blow. So you can see there, I put some more detail in. Nice, soft gray panels. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna catch the actual edge of this wing, the edge here at the bottom, and then these edges, these corner edges, this is where I wanna get a highlight. So all of this, these two areas, I can catch without worrying about masking. But along here, it's so close to this white, I need to mask this up. So this is what I'm gonna do right now. So I do love using my um, tweezers for this. This is often quite hard to get your masking tape exactly where you want it. And you do have to be spot on with this. You can't get this wrong. You can't leave a bit of that white showing because that grey will stand out like a sore thumb. A little bit on the top there. That's a little bit too much. You see I reuse my tape as well. You don't have to completely change the tape. You'll see when it starts stop sticking, you put a new bit on. I'll take a see so the tapes I've got here. I pre cut some of them, and they're all in kind of like different rough sizes. I haven't measured anything out. And then, do we want to go around the bottom with that? No, I don't think I do. So, that's probably enough masking now. So, when I'm airbrushing like this this is not like with the tape some of it is but some of it isn't I'm also going to use my fingers to kind of mask as i'm going so i'll start with these two edges and i'll show you what i mean so i've got my finger along the edge of the actual panel let's just get me, me paint going and now i'm almost going to use my finger as an indicator to where i've got paint So I'll start to see the grey on my finger and then I'll work it towards the edge of that piece. Let me just check the tip of my brush. Yeah. So when you're doing these subtler techniques where you're not using a lot of paint from your brush, you're going to get a lot of dry tip. So as you can see, I've just got a little bit of dry grey paint. You're really going to notice this. Once you start using your brush, you'll know instantly when she's not quite right. And she wasn't then. Much better. So, like I said, again, I'm going to use my finger. So, same at this bottom edge, this bottom corner. And then I can work very gently on the edge of this panel. So 
just wisp in the edge. Let's see if I can get myself in a position which makes it easier for you guys to see. Same again on this corner. Now also, I can actually catch this part. So I do that by putting my fingers both sides and just catching the edge. Front and centre, same again. So my fingers are acting like the masking tape. And I'm just going over the actual, like the peak on the flat. So now if I unmask that, you've got to be careful when you're unmasking because yeah, you've got paint under there that you could damage so take your time. Like I said I love these tweezers, I love using a pair of tweezers. But be careful not to scratch what you're doing or what you've done already even. So let's uh, drop my glasses. So there we go. You can see we've got some edge highlight on all the prominent corners. Oh, this is quite a graphic style, you know this. And then on some of these panel lines, I'm gonna catch this little line going around the top here. Next. And then I'm gonna move on to a different area just to show you a few more bits on this maybe some of the more freehand areas where I don't mask up as much, but I actually go back and put a bit of the black back in with a brush. Because sometimes certain shapes to mask up round are a bit hard and not really worth the time when you can just put a dob of black to fix it. So. So look, here, I don't know if you can see this, but here there's been a tiny little overspray of the grey. So let's get me black out. <laughs> little bit of black in there. And always have a little brush handy. And so I'll just straight away, while I'm here working, I'll just fix that. There you go, fixed. So that, that's gone back to black, which is what I want. I want that stark, con that stark contrast between the black and the gray. So let's move on to a different area. I'm wondering whether I should tackle this wing next or do something else. Yeah, let's, let's start on this area here. So I want to catch this edge. I want to catch this piece and I want to put a, a, a gray fade here. I want to catch these edges and also this corner and straight down there. So I will kind of mask, but not the way I've been doing with the other areas, because these are not panel lines. So this, I just want to keep, it just saves me repainting in black. I just want to get a bit of masking tape under, because I'm going to kind of spray the edge. That's what I need. So just on the edge of the tape, I'm just catching the edge of the model. You can see, just caught the edge. Now this piece, this rounded vent, this is where I'm going to touch in again. Let me just check the tip of my brush before I do this. Yeah. So dry tip, this is a regular thing. Every few minutes, you're gonna be just cleaning off that little bit of dry paint. I've tried flow improvers, 
they don't work. You could add a little bit of Liquitex airbrush, but when you're spraying such small quantities of paint, it gets dry. So on this, I want to catch this rounded edge and then just fade across. I'm not going to mask nothing. I'm just going to do this freehand. This is just practice. And then I'll show you how I'll touch in in a minute. up too well but you've got a nice strong grey at the front and then it fades out towards the back so now because there's this divot here that should have been left black instead of trying to mask around that weird little shape I'm just going to go and repaint in this black area so you have this nice contrast between that grey and suddenly that grey picks out the shape of that inlet so as you can see that there's the other one on the other side it's exactly the same and you've got that highlight over the edge. So where else do I want to highlight? So I'm gonna catch, while I'm at it, I'm gonna catch the tip of this gun mount. Tiny little spray on these. See that? Tiny little grey highlight. You can be really delicate with an airbrush. Yeah, you don't have to, you can paint really quite precisely once you get used to it. And when you've got these massive flat areas, to get really nice little highlights is really hard. Oh, she, she's misbehaving. Yeah, dry tip again. I do find this grey seems to dry out quite quickly. All the paints seem to react slightly differently in their mixes. The greys seem to be the driest. There we go. So, like I said again, you get used to it. You, you learn to understand your brush and realise when she needs a bit of help from you. Part of airbrushing is really getting your equipment to work the way you want it to work. So I'm just wrapping around this, just so I can catch the edge here. So I've got those few bits done there. I'm going to catch the top of this as well. Now let's have a look what I did on the other one. Yeah, I just caught that by hand. So I'm just going to try and catch this gently, freehand, this corner. She burst on me then. She went a bit mad. So I'm going to have to fix this. It's kind of good that you guys get to see that it goes wrong for all of us. So I'm just going to overpaint this piece in black. And then I'll come back when that's dry and fix it.
because my brush misbehaved. Little stinger. Right, so I'll catch these edges instead while I'm waiting. This is just an edge. See, I'm using my finger to stop that overspray going where I don't want it. And now I've got a nice highlight on the edge of the model. So all, all the time lifting, finding the detail and lifting it out, lifting it out. Let's try dry that off. So just air. And let's see if I can get that to work this time. She's still being a bugger. Might actually put a bit of Liquitex in this. tighten any of that up I can just, just a little bit of there I don't want it on this bit so tighten that up a bit of black and a bit of wet just fade that in and I want to catch that edge just to tidy that up I see that other little panel line I'm going to catch with a brush later um, is there anywhere else on here I want to catch yeah, probably on top of there, but this will re require a little bit of masking tape. There's a couple of straight details on here I can pull out. It's quite a plainness until you pick out all of these panel lines. There's nothing much to look at if you don't do that on this ship. So. Done. Swirl this little dab. That's all it takes. And I'll move down. Go. can you guys see that right so this camera is obviously not the best at picking out the subtleties but you can see where I've been painting right on these bits so let, let's pull in the painted one and just show you so I'm gonna just carry on repeating this process on all the edges I'm gonna do the same edge bit here I'm gonna catch these panels there's a few bits here I'm going to mask up and pull out with, with my fades. And then the same freehand over this corner and over here at the front of the ship, kind of a blander, a blander highlight. Um, this corner piece, this is just a freehand with a little tidy up with the black paint. Um, that's what I'm going to carry on doing now. So we're probably going to jump into fast forward mode because it's going to take me a while um, and I can't keep talking in, 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 in a drivel for hours so see you on the other side
Hi, uh, welcome back. So I've gone through the whole process of the gray highlights with the airbrush. Let's see if you can get a good look at this now. So you can see I've worked around the actual head of the model where the cockpit is. I've worked over all my edges. I've caught panel lines. I've caught the edges of the wings. I'll show you underneath. I've done the same thing underneath. So it's not every single little detail you're trying to catch for this. This is quite a graphic paint job. So you can see where I'm at, but we're not finished yet with this highlight on this gray. So what we're going to do now, shock and horror, I'm going to use a brush. It does happen from time to time, more than people think. They think it's just all airbrush work. It's not, it's part of it. So I've got wolf gray uh, with some Liquitex airbrush medium to thin it down a little bit. This is game air, so it's already thin, but I want it really thin um, and a small brush and that this is quite a high blue white highlight this is the color i use on the in-between stage on the white but i want this stark, uh, stark contrast right i want to pick so these grays are more your average battleship gray that you've got going on there's no blue in there but i'm going to put a blue gray now but it's really light so what i want to do is those corners where we did the gray i want to catch them with a brush so now this is a really delicate process and this is something you've got to take your time over. You can use the edge of the brush to catch it. You can use the straight of the brush to catch it. The trick is making sure your paint is mixed properly with a decent bit of flow medium. So we're not doing any other areas that we haven't already caught with the airbrush. We're just highlighting them again, a second level of highlight. So what this does is that shows the lovely subtle fade of the gray you've got. It's gonna make that lift out even more. And these are only extremity highlights. So you can see where I'm actually painting and what I'm not painting. I'm catching the right edges and coming down a little bit catching the hard edge of the model also over this so we're making a really high point for the light to catch but we're not doing it over everything just on extremities hard edges so when your paint's thinned you get to adjust the opacity so one coat will give you a certain strength two coats will make it a little bit more solid a color so this is like this is quite graphic here yeah? this is not trying to do a move if you were painting this like as a, a movie prop you would not be putting highlights on like this at all but this paint style is not that there will be another video in the future coming where we're going to talk about more like military modeling techniques. See now, now with this as well, you can add character. So I can just catch an edge and pull a little line. So let's see if you can see that in shot. Uh, where are we? There's like a couple of little crosshatch lines. Right, and what we'll try and do is as we get in towards this model being done we're going to put it in front of an SLR and we'll spin it round and you'll be able to actually see a lot more of this detail very clearly so now this again this is just labor of love time spent 
yeah, this is where you need to really, really take your time. I've spent a good couple of hours just getting those grey highlights done with the airbrush. And I'm probably going to spend the best part of an hour now, at least, catching them with a second highlight. See, and this will help your model to read as well from a distance. So and what that means is that you don't have to always pick the model straight up to see what's actually going on. Like the, the more subtle paint jobs I'll do, the more movie quality stuff, those really are subtle paint jobs and you'll see like the most incredible levels of detail but you have to pick up the models. You need to actually have them in your hand to see it. Whereas these from a distance will pop on a table. I really enjoy this style of painting. It's a little bit more freeing than the reality stuff. But it's kind of not too much with these, with these Imperials. So already I can feel that my paint's drying a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more Liquitex. And you can keep doing that, keep going back, remixing getting it back to where you want it and you want to load your brush and you can see I'm rolling it on my hand so you roll it out so you've got a nice tip on your brush but you've loaded your stock which is the back part of the actual bristles so it writes like a quill whereas when you're just trying to use a tiny little spot of paint on the tip of your brush it doesn't feed well it actually becomes harder to paint with So these graphic pulls that I'll do with the brush, so if you can think about the way things are hitting the ship, you can kind of make it read like a little bit of damage, although it's not actual damage, it's a hint at it. Or when you've got like some bland areas, you just want to put a little bit of interest, you can put a little cross hatch. Um, these things are much easier to see. So some of the actual pictures I'll post on my page, if you to grab those pictures and then zoom in with your fingers, you'll be able to see some of these brush marks and they really add something to the model. So here you can see, I'm just catching these edges, just lifting that highlight. Not over all of it, just over some of it. Let's uh, see if you can see that. They're starting to pop a little bit more now, these edge highlights that are happening. So now I'm going to repeat the process over the whole model. Um, I'm going to carry on doing this. Like I said, it's about an hour's work. You're probably looking at at least going all the way around, going back over, catching all the edges all the way around. And um, that's going to kind of wrap up where we're at with the kind of the grey highlights on this model so I'm going to crack on and that's kind of the end of this video and in the next one once I've done all that I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk you through kind of the, de the detailing process where we're going to finish this model we're going to pick the engines out pick the guns out a few little bits and bobs in silver which you'll see will help the model to read better um, the canopy glass and I might do a tiny bit of battle damage with a with a sponge technique which is quite fun um, you should use it limitedly but anyway that's for the next video hope you've enjoyed this one um, keep practicing don't get upset if you get this wrong you may want to practice some of these techniques on a bit of card first till you get the feel of your airbrush this is certainly a more advanced video so hope you enjoyed it and um, i'll see you in the next one one love guys